In this lab, you will determine the spontaneity of dissolving sodium nitrate in water. So when you dissolve sodium nitrate in water, we know by our solubility table that all nitrates are soluble. So dissolving sodium nitrate, NaNO3, in water should dissolute to sodium ion and nitrate ion. But that's not really what you're measuring. What you're measuring is the spontaneity of that reaction. So spontaneity is generally associated with delta S entropy. But with regards to spontaneity, you will be measuring delta H. And then from delta H, you will determine the delta S. So three main components go into the thermodynamics of a system. One is the free energy, which is delta G. The other one is the enthalpy, which is delta H. That is what you'll be actually measuring here. And then you'll, from that, you'll be measuring the entropy, delta S. So the only real measurement is delta H. And from that, you'll be measuring delta S. From that delta S, you should be able to determine whether the reaction, the dissolution or the dissolving of sodium nitrate in water is going to be spontaneous or not. So it is not so straightforward to think that because all nitrates are soluble, that this process is indeed spontaneous. So take a look at that equation that's illustrated in your lab manual, and then you'll have to do some mathematical manipulation to determine the overall spontaneity of this reaction. Once again, you're measuring delta H, the enthalpy. So here we're going to have our calorimeter. Our calorimeter is basically two styrofoam cups. Our calorimeter is basically two styrofoam cups. I've already weighed out the appropriate amount of sodium nitrate, NaNO3. How much did I weigh out? Well, you're going to have to measure that. You have 100 mils of a one molar solution that you want to measure. So it's basically converting 100 mils of one molar solution into grams. Okay, you're not given the sodium nitrate in solution. You're given or you're asked to be to convert that sodium nitrate to grams. So before you come to lab, make sure you convert 100 mils of one molar NaNO3 to grams of NaNO3. I have already done that. It's already weighed out here, ready to dump in. And I also have my temperature probe ready, my little lid to keep things insulated. And I'm pretty much ready to go for this experiment. So let's go to the computer here. As typical, we click on chemistry labs or something that's equivalently named in your lab station. And we're going to go to this system here, or that program there, called temperature versus time. Okay, make sure you have your temperature probe connected. So if you can zoom back out here. Here's my temperature probe. And it's connected, I don't know if you can see this, it's connected to my GoLink adapter. So I'm pretty much ready to go. Uh, before we move uh, any further, let's go back to the uh, computer screen. Now, your lab manual may have this at a, a time in units of seconds. And we can go ahead and convert that to seconds, but actually 300 seconds, which is the time limit in your protocol, is about five minutes. So instead of going through and getting it to measure in seconds, I'm going to make my life easy and just click on that 10. Once my cursor is that curvy looking thing, I'll click on that. The protocol tells us to run this for 300 seconds, which is five minutes. So I'm just going to click five and hit enter. We have our temperature probe, our little cardboard box square. This will serve as your lid. Before I add anything, I'm just going to put it in here. And that is going to be my calorimeter. You may want to get your partner to maybe hold this straight. Leave it out on the bench. Let's go here to collect. Okay, press the green collect button. I'm going to click on this. And we'll let this go for about 20 seconds or so. And uh, you can use your timer. 20 to 30 seconds is fine. Um, and once
once we do that, so you notice it's kind of equilibrating. We have a nice baseline. Our temperature is nice and stable at 23.5 degrees. Now this is where you're going to want to get your partner involved and you're going to, okay, it's stable. It's been a little past 20 seconds or so. Work with your partner and you're going to dump your NaNO3 enough that is equivalent to 100 mils of one molar in grams. You're going to put that in here. So let me get myself ready here. So you kind of want to do this fast. This is probably going to be a two-person per type uh, situation. And we are going to put it in here. I dumped in my NaNO3. And maybe I could use my temperature probe for just a little bit of stirring action. Not much. And so we want to stop this after five minutes. All right, so our data has reached the five minute mark. And we are told that we can collect just up to that time. So I'm going to click on stop. Anytime you click stop, that stops the data acquisition. So that means the experiment is done. So I'm going to click on stop. And that is the trajectory of my heat curve, temperature over time. Now, I can just maneuver the graph for aesthetics. And when I say maneuver the graph, maneuver the axis. So I'm going to change my top number in my y-axis. Note my cursor, it's a white arrow, now it's a squiggly line. I'll make that maybe 30 as my max. And then I'll do this as maybe 10 as my minimum. Okay, so things get amplified a little better here. Um, here you see the shape of my curve. You kind of want this smooth. Uh, the reason why this is not smooth was because of the jerky motion and that delay in dumping the sodium nitrate. However, you are asked to do this twice in the experiment. So when I do this a second time, I'm going to be extra careful that I make this more smooth, um, this downhill more smooth in its descent. But the general shape of the curve is going to look like this. Okay. Click on the stack button. And from the stack button, you will be able to determine your minimum temperature and your maximum temperature. Do this a second time and get another minimum temperature. And then you're ready to do the data analysis. So this is uh, one run of the addition of NaNO3 to water. We ran the experiment for five minutes. And uh, before, um, anything, I changed my axis minima and maxima. I changed it from uh, 0 to 20. And the stat will give you information on your minimum temperature and your maximum temperature. So notice here, this was before the addition of NaNO3 sodium nitrate. Once you add it, the temperature goes down. So automatically, that's one hint. The addition of NaNO3, sodium nitrate, to water causes the temperature to go down. So what does that mean in terms of your delta H? And correspondingly, what does that mean in terms of your delta S when you do your calculations? So once you've amassed your data and did an average of your temperatures for the dissolution of sodium nitrate in water, you're going to want to go through a data analysis in which you will determine the enthalpy, that is delta H, for that reaction. So in order to do that, there's actually two heats you've measured, if you remember. One is the heat of the solution, which is going to equal to the mass of the solution times S, the specific heat, that value times delta T, which is your change in temperature. Delta T is going to be their final temperature minus your initial temperature. So the solution, as we know, is nothing more than solute plus solvent. So a solution is going to be the mass of 
NaNO3 sodium nitrate in grams plus the mass of water that you've added in grams. So this is 100 mils. You can determine the grams of that utilizing the density. And the mass of the sodium nitrate is the initial mass that you weighed out before dissolution in water. And if you remember, it, it was 100 mils times a one molar solution of sodium nitrate. You are supposed to compute the number of grams in there. So the mass of the solution is nothing more than the solvent plus the solute. S is the specific heat. So we're going to utilize the specific heat of water. And for now, ignore the specific heat of sodium nitrate. The reason why we do that is when you dissolve a salt such as sodium nitrate in water, most of the heat absorption or the heat release comes in the form of water because the specific heat of water has such a high value. That constant is 4.184 joules per grams degree C. The specific heat of sodium nitrate will be negligible. So water is mostly playing a role in determining heat that's going to come off or heat that's going to be absorbed. The second heat that you will have to determine is the heat of the actual calorimeter. So if you remember, those two styrofoam cups also absorb heat. So those two styrofoam cups have a heat capacity. We will determine that as C times your delta T. So this value of C, according to um, the text in your lab manual, is about 10 joules per grams degrees C. So it's these two heats that you will have to determine the reaction of the system. So the reaction of the system is going to be the heat of the system plus the heat of the solution plus the heat of the calorimeter. All of that must equal to zero. That's just simply the law of conservation of energy. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So Q of the system is what we are interested in. So Q of the system in this case is going to be Q minus Q solution minus Q cal, the heat capacity of the calorimeter, how much heat gets absorbed from the calorimeter, which are your two styrofoam cups, and the heat that's emanating from your solution. So be careful of the signage here. You notice that in the demo, the temperature went down. So the signage will actually tell you whether the temperature will go up or whether it goes down. And that will ultimately be the, de the determinant on your heat, the signage of your heat. Remember, if your heat is positive, that implies heat is being taken in from the surroundings to the system. On the flip side, if your heat is negative, that means the system is evolving heat out to the surroundings. So the signage is going to be important. And as a big clue, once you dissolve that sodium nitrate in water, the temperature did go down. So really, the most important determinant in your heat is your delta T. That delta T is going to determine, once you added that sodium nitrate into the water, that delta T is going to play a major role in determining the sign, plus or minus, of the heat of the system. Another thing to be cognizant about are the units. So units of heat are either in joules or kilojoules. Enthalpy, or delta H, has the conventional units of kilojoules per mole or joules per mole. It's some energy per mole. In this case, the delta H, the enthalpy of your system, is going to be your Q of your system. That's going to come from the equation above, divided by the moles of NaNO3, sodium nitrate. So you know the moles of the sodium nitrate, because that is um, how you are able to determine the grams. So all you have to do is, once you get this heat, divided by the moles of the sodium nitrate, and you'll have the proper units of joules per mole or kilojoules per mole. Now, the title of this experiment is spontaneity. So spontaneity is not associated with enthalpy. Spontaneity is associated with the delta S term known as entropy. So from your delta H, you should be able to determine 
um, whether the dissolution of sodium nitrate in water is spontaneous or not, utilizing the thermodynamic equation of delta H minus T delta S. Now, usually that equals to delta G, but we will assume that the reaction has formed an equilibrium. And if the reaction has formed an equilibrium, this value will be zero. However, if delta H minus delta T delta S is greater than zero, or if delta H minus T delta S is going to be less than zero, that is really what is going to be the major determinant on your delta S value. Well, how do you know? whether your delta S is going to be positive or negative? Well, you know your delta H value, you know the temperature value, and from there on out you should be able to compute a delta S. And from that delta S entropy, you should be able to get a minimum entropy upon which this becomes spontaneous. So the overall goal here is to determine entropy. The reaction is in, in, in an equilibrium, however, if we assume that it's not in equilibrium, then the reaction will either be greater than zero or less than zero. So we're really talking about a situation where the reaction, after it has been completed, the delta H and the delta S, combined with the temperature, the specific temperature dependent quantity, will either be greater than zero or less than zero. You have to determine that delta S value from the delta H and the T value. So it is these two equations that are primarily going to be utilized. And again, that's going to be determined by your delta H value that you've computed above and the temperature dependence on this thermodynamic equation. So that's a quick overview of the data analysis. Do check your post-lab and pre-lab questions for more information and furthermore on how to attack some of these questions uh, that are in the post-lab. So thank you.